Hey y'all, what's going on? FC here. Um, I know the last uh, entry that I did with uh, Greg, I was talking about doing reviews for Hardcore Henry and um, Green Inferno, and those are coming up, but I have got to get this off my chest right out of the gate, because this is going to bother me until I talk about it. Um, <clears throat> past couple of days I was catching up on some of my favorite bloggers, you know, Angry Joe, um, Cinema Snob, uh, Northern Lion, Sneaky G, uh, Harkop 311, of course, is one of my former uh, blog co-hosts previous stuff. And I am not lying to you. Every single entry that I saw had the exact same advertisement prior to that entry loading. And it wasn't some of my normal pet peeves. This was something that just boiled my beer to no end. I am talking about Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass produced by Tim Burton. I know some people hate the word moist or even the phrase baby bump or bay or anything like this. Tim Burton makes me cringe. Not because his films are over her, well they are over the top, hideous per se, but because they are all the same. Same characters, same concept, same little gaudy Bella Morte threw up a rainbow if they're needing too many sweet tarts gothy thing going on. Same concept. <sighs> Angry Joe, I don't mean to copyright or steal some of your phrases. Every little fantastical thing that Tim Burton has touched, you done fucked it up. And that's even saying this right now. I'm not going to just criminalize everything Tim Burton did, because I actually did see Nightmare um, Before Christmas back when it first came out. And that kind of set the bar for me, that had just the right amount of gothy darkness, fantasy, CGI, characters had some difficulties and, you know, a few impediments, but it all actually kind of blended together in this nice little miasma of hope, sorrow, dark, light, Halloween, Christmas, without Kirk Cameron or Pure Flix poisoning it. I was cool with that. Granted, at the time, I was eight, nine, ten years old, that's beside the point. And of course everybody talks about Edward Scissorhand like it split the atom. Once again, I can dig that. Makes perfect sense. Um, but Tim Burton's recent flicks ever since those movies have been banes of my existence. All the characters are exactly the same, have the same voice speech, have the same character development, all the movies have the same plot development to it, or lack thereof. And don't even get me started about the color scheme. <sighs> Just... The first two seconds that I saw of the trailer of Through the Looking Glass, I knew right then and there from the description before I even saw the characters that it was Tim Burton. It had this little rosy, neo-gothy feel to it, like Skeletor took an LSD and went on a hunger strike and was tripping out the entire time, which is not a good thing. Character-wise, no offense to Johnny Depp, I lodged you in some of your earlier flicks. I liked you in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, the first 30 minutes. And I could have dug you in Secret Window, mainly because I'm a Stephen King fanatic. But at least you were tolerable. That and John Turturro was in, I kept thinking that he was going to pull a Jesus quote halfway through it. But that's beside the point. Just all of your Tim burton -y aspects are exactly the same. Cookie cutter, static, over the top, and ridiculous in the worst possible way. 
I would even sit through a movie with Ken Jeong and Shia LaBeouf. I know I grown so much about Michael Bay movies, but when it comes to Michael Bay and Tim Burton, I would rather sit through a marathon session of Michael Bay than sit through one single Tim Burton produced or directed flick, particularly the Alice in Wonderland series. I guarantee you that Lewis Carroll is spinning in his grave right now so fast he's reversing the polarity of the earth because he cannot stand the way that this has been poisoned like everything else Tim Burton has produced. Growing up in the late 80s, early 90s, actually no, I growing up in the early 80s, let's even just detract from that, um, I saw Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory with Gene Wilder, probably 87 maybe, don't quote me on that, and it was fantastic. The perfect balance of childhood fantasies, dreams come true, a little bit of darkness, and a whole lot of snobbery, all packed into one perfectly executed movie. I loved Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I would love to watch it again, just for nostalgia's sake. I would like to see the Nostalgia Critic review it, if he hasn't done so already. I apologize if he had. I haven't caught up to my NC uh, stuff. Um, even seeing Brad Jones for um, old school, even though that's not really his bag per se, I would like to see that in action. Anywho, I saw Charlie and the Chocolate Factory mm, maybe five, six years ago with my ex-girlfriend because she wanted to see it and no amount of alcohol can ever wipe those foul memories from my brain nor give me that time of my life back. And all of his other movies, uh, Sweeney Todd, I never saw it. I loved the play. I saw it back in middle school. I saw it again in high school. Uh, my Parents, I believe, got me to go see it at one point. I just couldn't watch it. The scenery so over the top, so schlocky, just horrible. Just once again, five seconds out of the gate, you know that it's Tim Burton, and that's not a good thing. A lot of directors and producers have their kind of staple thing going on. Uh, Chris Nolan, for example, you saw any of the first couple of Batman films, you saw Inception on the trailers, you knew that was Chris Nolan. <clears throat> but Chris Nolan, for his little staples, you knew you were getting a treat because they were splitting the mold. Um, Michael Bay, you had your staples. And mind you, Transformers 4 was head and shoulders better than Transformers 3. That's saying a lot. But you knew at least you could see a change of things. Tim Burton has nothing like that. It is like watching, when you were growing up, if you were an 80s baby, trying to flip on a channel like Cinemax or HBO that your parents grayed out so you just get the nice little gray crystal screen of death. That's all it is. Characters, plot, animation, special effects, all the way down to the idiotic conversations that the characters have with each other. It's not good. It's not terrible. It's not like I'm watching a Lucio Fulci or Andrea Schnoss film, but we'll get to that. But it's all the same. And I know some of the people that are watching this are going to take offense to the fact that I'm ripping apart their little precious snowflakes of a movie that are just the right amount of rainbows and blackness. But if you watch at least two of his films, you're going to get the exact same damn thing. I am sorry, Tim Burton. I tried to give you a shot several times, and the only thing I got out of it was misery and a liver that is turning to rock candy, because the only way I can sit through any of your damn films is by drinking. 
heavily. Honestly, if Rudy Ray Moore was still alive, I would love to see one of his remakes of your films. Because it couldn't get any worse than what you have already done. Stop making movies. I know I say that about a lot of films, but oh my god. This drives me insane. I just... Change your style. Change your actors. I know you have a stable actress at your disposal. A lot of producers and directors do that. Chris Nolan does. Um, Anthony Weiner does, who did Mad Men, The Sopranos, and so on and so forth. James Spader is a stable actor for a lot of dramatic crime, mystery, thriller things. You look at Damien Lewis. I mean, my God, the guy was in Homeland and Billions. And before he played the villain role for that, you had him in my favorite miniseries of all time, Band of Brothers. That solidified it. He's an amazing actor. I'm not discounting Johnny Depp as an amazing actor. But my God, change his role around and he is, or he is going to stagnate. I'm not a fan of the pirate series, like the first one that kind of broke the mold. But two, three, and four, and five now that it's coming out are gonna be exactly the same. Like LJN stopped producing video games and started producing static, horribly followed movies, followed by a select cult of people that worship the ground this dude walked on like he split the damn atom. You know what? Get over yourselves. Get over your little gothy, rainbowy purestness and actually watch something quality. Something that's not static. Something that has something to offer the world. I'm not denying the goth subculture. No. I've got a lot of friends who were part of that that like flicks that they and I don't get along with, that we disagree on, but we don't mind. But so far, even they have agreed on the fact that these Tim Burton movies are all the same. You've come to the end of your rainbow, now get off it. Enough is enough. Let this be the end of it. Stop it. You're turning into Uwe Boll with the fantasy stuff, and that's not a compliment. Now that I think about it, I would rather watch Uwe Balls Alone in the Dark than watch this. I'm sorry. Get off your high horse, change your repertoire, or the more that these people are going to start losing interest, the more you're going to start losing money, and then you're just going to have a little cult of people going, Aah! enough is enough. Well, now that I got that out of my system, it actually feels pretty good. Um, okay, so I promise the next couple of reviews will involve Hardcore Henry, and the Green Inferno. And a couple of flicks coming up, I'll be introducing another couple of good new co-hosts. I promise. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with my high blood pressure. And I'll catch up with you guys on the flip side. Peace.